Mosh pits are better organized than you might think. Scientists at Cornell University say that while large groups of flailing heavy metal fans may look chaotic, they're governed by the same laws of physics that determine the movement of gas particles. In a research paper using YouTube mosh pit videos as a reference, Jesse Silverberg says that those laws of physics could be applied by security forces to prevent panic and violence in large crowds. So the collective motion of people depends on the social circumstances. You know, at one end you have people walking down the street, they form lanes so they don't bump into each other. And at the other end, during uh, riots and protests, you have people that get jammed or crushed or stamp, you know, there's a stampede. And so by studying how people behave and the extreme social situations found at heavy metal concerts, we get a lens into how people will behave in other similarly extreme situations, like riots, protests, and situations of escape panic. The researchers broke the mosh pit down by studying the videos and then created computerized mosh pit simulations based on a few rules, namely that people collide and that they want to move but do so in a random manner. They then added flocking terms which illustrate that people want to move in the same direction as those around them. We focused on two distinctly different types of collective behavior. One of them, which is called a mosh pit, is this very random and chaotic mess of people bouncing around and jumping into each other and bouncing off each other and it's just, it's a it's a total mess. On the other hand, there's a very ordered type of collective motion where people will run around in a circle. There'll be a giant vortex of humans. And the really cool thing that we found in our simulation is that we were able to reproduce both behaviors just by changing a single number. That discovery came as a surprise and turned what began as a fun project into something Silverberg's advisor Itai Cohen says has potential application in the real world. If we could understand how to move between the mosh pit, which is this random motion, to the vortex state, which is the herding motion, where you can get a stampede and people getting hurt, if we could control that transition, then that would have serious implications for crowd control. Could you put a post um, somewhere, an architectural design piece, that would essentially prevent the crowd from nucleating a stampede in some place? Could you, in the way that salt prevents crystallization of water, in some way inhibit the formation of stampedes? The Cornell team say their research is still in its infancy, but hope with more mosh pit experience under their belts to keep shedding light on the science of headbanging.